Three, two, one, and we are live. Uh, welcome, everybody, to yet another episode of The Bench Doctor. Uh, however, Scott has declined to uh, to do this particular episode. We've got a guest host, Lonnie Weissman. Uh, I didn't decline. Just, didn't I just don't have a Ithaca. Right. That, that means you decline. Um, <laughs> so tonight... Uh, last week, last week we we uh, we pulled apart a different shotgun. This week we're going to pull apart an older shotgun. Uh, and uh, Lonnie, who you may remember, uh, has helped teach the stop the boot classes. But he also happens to own guns, so this is his uh, this is his street cred. Uh, Lonnie, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you. Get started, and uh, sure. we're we're all going to be grading your performance based okay. on Scott's. Thank you. Performance. I appreciate that. So uh, this is a model 37. Uh, oh, and, and you're, if you can get closer to your mic, you're really low. Um, I'm right here. Yeah. Well, we'll turn up our gain and and uh, go from there. Yeah, it's it's real low from uh, from when we did our test yesterday. So, uh, hang on All a right. second. Let me let me see something here. Yes, hang on. A little better. A little better. I, um, here we go. How's that? A little better? better. I think we can hear you. We'll uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on the chat. As always, folks, if you've got questions, drop them in chat. Uh, we won't unmute you unless it's a really small group, uh, and we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll ask them for you. Uh, today we've got Eric and Scott acting as moderators, and we might have a couple more join in. So if you got a question, drop them in chat. We'll ask them. If you can't hear, we'll ask him to repeat himself, uh, etc. Let me try right. this one more. Is that better? That's better. Oh, that's so yeah. much better. Okay. There, okay. It, it, so long as I dog and pony it long enough, <laughs> you, you get your stuff together. You do sound Thank like you. you're on a 40s telephone, but it's a lot louder. Yeah, well, okay. So let me say this again. This is an Ithaca Model 37. Uh, this it was new to me and was brand new when I bought it 40 years ago. Um, and there are some differences about this. Um, let me just turn this up. So this uh, ejects out through the bottom. So for those of you who are lefties and can't seem to find a shotgun that ejects out the left side, uh, Ithaca does still make shotguns and they are all still bottom eject. So let me demonstrate that I have an empty chamber in here. Let me see, where are we? There we go. I have an empty chamber in here with a chamber flag and the magazine is also empty. So I'm gonna take that chamber flag out so that I can go ahead and start the disassembly of this. So the way this disassembles is similar to uh, what Scott did, is there is a little cap here on top of the magazine that unscrews and then the barrel rotates and basically just pulls straight out. Then uh, the magazine to empty to take out the spring and the feeder plug is the same thing. And this is the easy part. The hard part comes when I get ready to take the trigger and bolt out. So that's how you take the barrel, the spring from the magazine and the cap on the magazine. And then we get to the fun part, which is because this shotgun disassembles from the rear, the first thing that I need to do, and I've already taken the uh, recoil pad off because uh, it's just a pain in the butt and I didn't want to mess with it, is an extension with a 3 8 inch on it and a ratchet. Try and keep this in frame. And the butt comes right off from the back side. Now, this has three, actually five screws that need to be taken out uh, in order to pull the trigger assembly out and the bolt. And Let me get my screwdriver ready. And so the first one here, this is a locking screw. And 
on a really, really old shotgun, you may have to pay attention to the left side versus the right side, because in the days when they were doing a lot of screws by hand, they did uh, left and right threads. Uh, in this case, it's not something you need to do, uh, but it is something you want to be aware of if you're working on really, really old guns in general. So that takes out that locking screw. And then this comes out and what you'll notice, I don't know if you can see this in this light, but this has a little metering piece on it so that you have to turn that to where you get the screw lined up with the locking screw. And it does not have to be super tight. It just has to be tight enough to get to the right spot. So then we turn it over and it's the same thing on this side. Let me know if I'm going too fast, by the way. And like Scott has always recommended, these are hollow ground screwdrivers so that you're not going to mess up the slot. And we take this one out. And we'll flip it over one more time. And those, that screw you're taking out is locked by the other one. And it does it have a little uh, indentation in it where that yeah, screw fits it in? Is, it is a metered screw, uh, uh, head on that so that it, it, actually, um, it actually has an indentation um, for, for the lock screw to set in so it holds it. That way you don't have to worry about the lock screw being, or the, the main screw being super tight because right. it's not going to back out. In reality, I don't, I, you might, want to use a little bit of blue Loctite on the smaller screw, but you need to be really careful when you put Loctite in because you don't want it to drip through into the body of the gun. Uh, and especially in this case, because right behind that screw is, is the bolt and all the action for uh, the shotgun. So then the only other thing that needs to happen, I can get this, there we go, is to pull that trigger off. And that's the trigger group. And then the bolt, the interesting thing about this one is you'll notice there's a little pin right here. I don't know if you can see that. See that little pin right there? Not this, this gets out of there. There's a little pin on the bolt. Yeah. You, have to, you have to open that pin up in order to free the bolt. And this is always the hard part. Is it like a cotter pin? It's a, it's a spring-loaded pin. Ah. And so when you take that pin out, out comes the spent cartridge ejector and the bolt and the bolt is in two pieces just like that and I'll oh, yeah. this that thing is yeah. I was just gonna say this thing is not as dry as I thought it was interesting must have done a really good job of lubricating it back <laughs> in the day uh, so anyway this is this is the the bolt that you will find and here are the extract the extractors for uh, the shotgun shell, right? And this right here is the spent cartridge ejector and also the loading mechanism. So when you pull it back, uh, the spent cartridge drops and the new cartridge comes out from the magazine. And then when you run the, the slide forward, when you run the pump forward, this comes up and in goes the shell. And that is the takedown of a Model 37. Very cool. So like I said, it's generally, it's fairly easy. What they tell you, the, the careful things to, in putting it back together is you always want to put these three pieces together first. Uh, otherwise, it becomes more problematic getting it in to uh,
you're a little bit off camera if you're doing anything important, but. Yeah, Lonnie, you're off camera, by the way. Here you go. Also, there was a uh, request up thread um, wondering if uh, you if you want to get adventurous, can you remove the extractor from the top of the bolt that's not held in place by a pin? Apparently someone on here has got that and uh, can't figure out how to get it apart. Hey, Lonnie, you're, you're on mute. No yeah, audio. Lonnie, we got no audio, Lonnie. Okay, here we go. How's that? Yeah, there we go. That's better. Okay, so the reason that you cannot take this out without that moving that pin is, as you can see, these parts are interlocked. So there's no way to take this apart without taking that pin and sliding the whole piece completely out. Hopefully that answers the question. Is, is there another one on the other side that's not held in with the pen? Yes, there is. So it's not really, let's see if I can find it. There's this piece right here. And this actually slides into, there's a little hole on the side right here. That slides right into that spot on, in that hole. So this piece right here. And on some of the, it, this is the thing you have to be careful, on some of the Ithacas, there is a little spring that sits behind that pin. And if you take it apart, that spring will pop off. This particular model does not have that, but I do understand on their later versions of the Ithacas, uh, there's a little spring on here that sits in between this rod and, the, and where the pin goes in. Yeah, this baby, it's been a while since I've taken anything inside of this, so a lot of, lot of grit that I don't particularly care for. <laughs> Dry with grit, uh, I mean, it's a quick way to uh, break one in though. Yeah, it, it definitely will do that. And... Hey, Lonnie, so, re real quick. Yeah. Uh, same, same, same person. Uh, and I don't know if you've actually gone this far into it, but actually on the bolt itself, I think it has two extractors. It does. And there's one of those extractors that is not held on by a pin. There, it's just, uh, if you put it forward a little bit, you're out of camera. So right there and there are your two extractors. Yeah. And I guess the one without the pin is the one that's giving him trouble. It looks like it has to be driven out with a punch. Yeah. So this, this right here, this is pinned. You're off camera. Yep. This is pinned right here. So mm -hmm. that's a pin. You're going to have to drive that pin out. You want to be careful because there is a pretty good tension spring on that. Yeah. So going after stuff like that, uh, I would. And then the other uh, side just has to, it's probably dove, dovetailed is what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, it looks, like, looks mm -hmm. like it is dovetailed in. I've never pulled the extractors off of this and I have no desire to do so unless I break it. Yeah, I would recommend if you're gonna do it, do it over a punch block and then uh, make sure that the pin is not a tapered pin. Probably not, but driving a tapered pin in, sometimes you can just make it worse for yourself if you're not careful. Yeah, it doesn't and do, look like do it on tapered. camera so we can all see it go really, really wrong. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I uh, I am a firm believer that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, I never I never would remove the extractors on a shotgun unless it needed it. Uh, Ooh, ouch! Mike says that Scott would do it for us if it, if he was doing the call. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Tell Mike to go suck an egg. Okay, so I use um, this stuff uh, for my cleaner. The reason I do it is because right now most of my work is done indoors and this stuff has no 
uh, odor whatsoever. You take all the fun out of cleaning guns. Yeah, I know. And I always keep a pile of rags underneath my bench. Yeah. Keep forgetting I'm on camera here, so I'm sitting here working on this stuff and nobody can see what I'm doing. So again, there's that little pin we were talking about. Right, so when this thing goes back together, uh, that pin has to line up basically with the operating rod. There's a, a little pin hole in there. I don't know if you can see that, but there is right here, there's a little pinhole uh, that that pin's going to fit in. One of the things that's interesting about a parkerized uh, weapon like this is sometimes you can't tell where the, if there's rust. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to put just a little bit of oil back on this, not much. Really just a light coat just to get it lubricated and also running a patch over to make sure I didn't miss any really bad gunky stuff. And then with the trigger housing again because I haven't been in here in years and the, one of the reasons I haven't is, is that this became a bit of a safe gun in the fact that it has lived in a safe for probably the last 20 years, I've stopped shooting it when I realized they were no longer available in the general market. How are we doing for time? You got plenty. Good. Yeah. So then I'm gonna put a little oil on this where it's gonna slide back in. Okay, and now comes the part that Ed's waiting for. I'm gonna put this thing back together. And this is the one place where I have tended to mess up is this rod has this, this extra, uh, the cartridge ejection rod has a very specific orientation it's supposed to be in. And on occasion, I've been known to mess that up. Oh man, Ed, I'm gonna disappoint you. I think it's gonna go back together. So another thing you have is uh, there's a little spot in here that uh, you have to get past. It's still early, Lonnie. Yeah, I know. Uh, one other thing. Never we'll claim go. victory early. Yeah. This is always the case. I ran across this the other day too, and I couldn't quite figure out why it decided to do that. Yeah, sometimes aligning those action rods is a pain. Well, the, the, the channel has a long history of pain, suffering. Uh, I hate, hate to disappoint you, Ed, it just went in. <laughs> long and history then, of pain and suffering, both by the host and the audience. Indeed, indeed, indeed. But look at that, Scott, look at that. He almost, oh, no, that, that ain't right. So, she is where she needs to be. And now it's time for assembly. And I'm gonna wait for that piece until I get this back together. 
So that piece you took out goes in after? It, you it goes in after, it. yeah. It goes in after, uh, actually it should go in now because it's, I'm gonna go ahead and put the trigger in first. And what, what does that piece do? That, a good question. <laughs> I've never really looked at, oh, it has a little, um, has a little, uh, it holds the, uh, the, uh, the loaded uh, shot shell in the magazine. Got it. Had to look at that for a second. So we'll let that sit for a second. Put a little oil on this baby. What I'm looking for, there it is. Okay, knew I had one. <laughs> I wanted this because I, control, I can control the oil flow a lot better. So I'm gonna put a little oil down on the trigger uh, and on the hammer. And then when you put this back in, it's always best to have the hammer down. Oh, come on. Here we go. And come on, Papa, baby. So I'm going to flip this over. Take my screw, this first one. This is to hold the trigger in place. And then the thing that I've discovered about this is while it is true, these holes should line up on the spent cartridge extractor. Uh, I have found that it's, it really works best if you start both sides to hold it in place. Sometimes these holes don't want to line up. I think it's because you forgot a part, Lonnie. Nope, haven't forgot a part. Oh, over there to your left. That's a screw bit. It's a screwdriver. No, Pretty no, sure. that, that's definitely supposed to go in there. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But thanks for trying there, Eric. I love you too. Put it in there anyway. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and set that down in there. And I'm going to tighten it up and see if I can. Sometimes these will line up and sometimes they won't. And this one doesn't. So I'm going to back it off a little bit. So I have my little notch located in the correct place. There we go. But you are right, Eric, that, that is a very crucial piece because that's my small screwdriver tip. <laughs> and this you want down good and tight. And that one just seems, this one side seems to line up perfectly with how the little gap is for some reason.
thumb, tiny little screws, and I have big fat fingers. Magnetic screw bits have saved me many times. Yeah, I think about it every once in a while. I magnetize some of the screw uh, screw bits and sometimes punches to hold on to little tiny springs. But right now, everything is back the way it needs to go, and the action is working. Yay. You can see that everything moves the way it's supposed to. So now it's about getting everything back together. This is always the fun part because I can never tell if I actually have this frame. We can't see it. Yep. Let me move my. There we go. How's that? There you go. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in there. And this is always the fun part because that's the hard thing to line up. Yeah, the, the ratchet handle's caught in whatever the cord is, so. Yeah. That was almost a video disaster. There well, we go. Scott has pulled his whole camera rig off of whatever. Oh, yeah. And lights. Yeah. So now we've got the butt stock is back on. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the magazine. And I'm going to first put first put the plug back in to the magazine. What's the capacity on those by the way, Lonnie? This one is 7 plus 1. Oof. And it's 2 and 3 quarter uh, shells. This is before the era of three inch. Yeah, those were the, yeah, those are used, we were used a lot in law enforcement. Yep. And uh, like I was telling Scott or, uh, or uh, Eric earlier, uh, these uh, were interchangeable with the, uh, with the different trench guns that were used uh -huh. in uh, Vietnam by both the Marines and the Army. Yeah, I think they were the last slam fire shotgun still being produced because I yep. know they, the 1897 of the Model 12 died out. Like so you can see now that the end cap is back on the magazine. And this is the little piece that screws into. You're off camera. This is the little piece right here. That's going to screw into that opening on the barrel. And then this is a little retaining ball that has a very tight spring in there. And when you take this out, you'll start to feel the ratcheting uh, of that ball against the uh, magazine end cap and the barrel holder. So this is always the fun part because I seem for some reason, I managed to always put this on backwards. So let's see if I can manage to do this. Okay. Ah, I know what the problem is. Excuse me. There we go. Gotta have the bolt open. And so we get the barrel on. And we back this back out. And you can take that, just has to be finger tight. And there we go. Yay! She is together. And the whole thing for people that didn't understand the whole idea of slam fire, uh, as long as my finger's on the trigger, uh, the hammer will follow the, uh, the firing pin. And the action of running the, the pump forward will cause the, the shotgun shell to ignite. And then here is the slide release. 
Yeah, see, that's like the 870, but it's on the other side. Right, and then the safety, the way you know whether the safety's on, I don't know if you can see this, but when the safety is in like this, that, that's the neural piece. When that's in, the safety is on. And when that's out, nope, sorry. When that's out, the safety is on. And when it's in, the safety is off. And there you have the assembly and reassembly of a Model 37 short barrel trench gun. Yay. Hey, Lonnie, we have a question from the crowd. Do the, sure. uh, do the, the 37s all slam fire reliably? I have never, so I do know that when Ith Ithaca has, has changed that from slam fire on the later models, uh, but I don't think it was really uh, for a problem with reliability. Mine has never failed whatsoever on a slam fire. Yeah, the only risk about doing it is an out of battery uh, detonation. So right. you, yeah, you get going, get too happy with it and you could set one off with it out, without it being completely in the chamber, which bad things happen. So, so, so we do not recommend slam firing. No. no, no. As a normal operation in your shotgun, your mileage may vary. Don't try this at home. Right. So it basically the slam fire was really, the, the use of the slam fire was really for military purposes. Uh, it was basically a suppression fire type of a weapon uh, at close quarters uh, in Vietnam. Uh, it, it, was, it was really generally just used in, in uh, areas where we were doing clearing uh, because even tunnel rats couldn't use them because if you were a tunnel rat, all you had was a 45 and a flashlight. And, and major cojones. Yeah, well, and a, and, a, and a kind of a death wish, I think. Yeah, uh, you had to lug your, your, your cojones around with you. So I, I was actually hoping, I had, uh, I, I had ordered some, uh, some snap caps for this so I could show the function, but because they did not come and I do not want to run uh, anything <laughs> through this. <laughs> I love you guys, but I don't want to blow a hole in my room and I don't want to embarrass myself with a negligent uh, fire. <laughs> So anyway, so, so you're not going to put real no, you, no, no, I'm not. Do not endorse the. Uh, we do not the loading and of it, real firearms with real rounds on this. And, it, and in fact, whenever I'm on my bench working on any particular firearm, I do not have any ammo that works in that firearm on my bench. Well, we'll get you some. We'll get you some snap caps because I think we have some in the store. So, well, I I ordered some. They sh they actually probably will. They, they might be downstairs by the door now, but it's too late to worry about it. Well, if, if you're like me, that stuff usually gets here the day after you did the video. So the interesting thing is, is uh, they do, a, they do a, a, a mark on this, uh, on both the receiver and on the barrel to show that they are matched marks. So on this one, both the barrel and uh, the receiver have a, a, a yeah, Smith's mark of a... You can't see it. It's a P, basically, and a bird. Oh, cool. It's a P inside of a bird. Point to, point to, point to the two marks with your finger. So, that so can... right there yeah. and on the barrel itself is an identical mark in the All same right, exact can, orientation. You can see a lightened bit on there. So I don't know if I, I – the problem the is light, I don't think the focus uh, – uh, To your uh, left, left. No, no, up, no, back, up, up. Stop. I don't know if you can see uh, that there. You can almost uh, see it. Almost see it. Nearly yeah. there. So that, that's basically it. And then the only thing I would do uh, when I was putting this back together is uh, I would put my recoil pad on. Now, I added this. Uh, it did not originally come with this recoil pad. Uh, but I also wanted a little more space on it. So I added a spacer and the recoil pad. Um, it's, uh, I don't even know, it's, it's a Packmeyer, oddly enough. A white, yeah, a white line, after white line Packmeyer. Yeah. Did it have a butt plate that it just screwed into, or did you? Uh, uh, it had, it, it did have a metal butt plate. So, and then one of the things that I do, uh, I was showing this to Ed, is uh, 40 years ago when I bought this thing, I also bought this lovely little swab that is the full length of the barrel. Ooh. And it's made for all shotguns. So it will fit uh, from 12 gauge, it'll fit 10 gauge, it'll fit uh, uh, 410. Uh, and it's really nice because you can, you can swab the barrel out 
And by the way, this is washable. You have to hand wash it, but it is washable. Uh, throw it in with your wife's clothes. She won't mind. Yeah. And then the other thing is, is I don't know if you can see it, but on the end, there's a little hook there that you can actually put a bore brush on. Huh. So it's kind of a, kind of a fun thing. I, uh, but like I said, this is, this is something, I, in fact, here, let me see if I can get it. There's another little, this is a little piece that fits on the end of that also. Yeah, and that's what I use uh, on the end of a cleaning rod. I have a brass brush and a uh, cotton like that. That's what I clean most shotgun bores with. Well, let's see. This was made by, this is Tyco. Tyco made this. It's called a Tyco shotgun cleaner. All right. Uh, That's any it. questions from the audience, folks? Any? Lonnie's about done. We can call it the night. All right. Good job, Lonnie. Thank you. Uh, hey, I, I hate to say this, uh, Scott. I didn't. It, it went back together. Uh, that's all right. Uh, all right. I, I appreciate you disemboweling your Ithaca for my education. It's a. I. You know. I have to tell you. I have. I have two other shotguns. Uh, Eric knows I have a Stoger, which is kind of an interesting pain in the butt. Uh, and I also have a Mossberg tactical with a tactical light on it that uh, is, is generally the shotgun that I use when I'm going out and doing pattering tests and stuff like that. Um, but this, this one, this was my first one. And uh, the serial number starts off with the 37, by the way, to tell model number. And then there's, uh, uh, right now, there are seven different digits on the, uh, on the serial number on this one. This is my shotgun. There are many like it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call the ball. Great. Uh, give everybody about 15 minutes back. We'll see you in the pub. All yeah. right. Thank you so much. That was wonderful as usual. Scott, thanks so much for sharing the screen time. Yep. And, and we'll, uh, uh, we'll see you guys next week. And we yeah. don't know what we're doing. Maybe I think AK I'm going to do the, a the AK. The AK47. Yeah, AK yeah. We might be doing AK47s or SKSs or something. We think Scott can get those back together. So. <laughs> It'll be fun. We'll see you all next week. Thanks so much. Thank you all. Right. all. Bye. Bye.